Hello, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my book shopping vlog in Oxford. So I am attempting to record this all in one go and let's see how it goes. So I started the day kind of early and left in my car to head to the park and ride at Oxford. I forgot you'd be able to see me in the reflection until that last minute. So enjoy <laughs> that awkward angle of myself. Um, please do ignore the warning that comes up on my car. It is booked in at the garage don't worry there's nothing wrong so i made it to the park and ride in pretty decent time and then the bus driver just drove off without me and i had to wait for the next bus so i was late and i apologize now oxford is a bit weird for me because when i was a kid it was my dream to go to oxford i always thought my entire life growing up that i would go to oxford and i would study natural sciences at oxford or cambridge or some kind of science at oxford and that didn't happen. I mean, it could have happened if I'd wanted it to, but I went to a summer school when I was a teenager in Oxford and having met the students there and seeing the lifestyle that happens at Oxford, I knew I wouldn't have survived. So I had to give up on that dream and find a new one. So Oxford is always bittersweet for me going in. It's somewhere that I didn't go to for a really long time because of that but I really enjoy going now. I think it is a beautiful place and it has lots of things to do, but it is kind of expensive. Now, the goal of the day was to meet Beth from Books Nest in Oxford and we are going to go book shopping. I had originally said to Beth that I was going to try and look for horror books and spooky books, but as you'll see in this vlog, that quickly goes out of the window because I didn't really know which of those books I would buy if I was to focus on horror books. On my journey in, the thing that always amazes me on this route that I take in on the bus is just how many private schools there are in Oxford. The town I live in, I don't think it has a single private school in the town. Um, anyone that wants to go to a private school would need to go to the surrounding villages. So the sheer number of private schools you pass just on this bus route alone is quite staggering. And I think it really shows the difference in the wealth and demographics of Oxford compared to where I grew up. But you can't deny just how beautiful it is. At some point in the journey, you actually go past the college that I thought I was going to apply to go to, uh, because when you apply to university in Oxford, you apply to a specific college, not to the university itself. And that's always bittersweet as well, seeing the accommodation I always thought I would be going to and the university I thought I'd be going to. But I was very excited to see Beth. We hadn't seen each other since Yalk, I think, at this point. We had been very, very busy over the summer, so it was great to organise to see her. We had hopes to organise something spooky and Halloween-y, but the UK just doesn't seem to do much. So instead, we decided to just go on a book shopping tour in Oxford. And this is where I stopped filming because I got awkward. This is a bit of a funny clip because I couldn't figure out where Beth was, and it turns out I was right by the waterstones that she was in, and there she is right there in her orange striped jumper. <laughs> so we actually decided to leave waterstones immediately and go and get food because we were hungry, and I got these delicious beef tacos from the Nitos. I know it's not authentic, but it was delicious. And they had this really cute book decor on the wall, which I thought was awesome. We stopped at this little shop, but unfortunately didn't buy anything, but I saw this really cool thing on the outside, which I think you should pause to read. Then we headed straight back to the Waterstones we had just left. This is where I made my first book purchase of the day and the first choice was The Night and Its Moon by Piper CJ. Don't you worry, I will be wrapping up at the end of this vlog all of the books that I bought and why, so hold on until the end. We mostly stayed in the fantasy and sci-fi section. I loved this Lord of the Rings or J.R.R. Tolkien section and I spotted my favourite Ready Player One. And None of the Night was there, which I almost bought before I remembered I had bought the Illumigrate special edition, so probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> and then I also saw this beautiful edition of Six Crim Crimson Cranes, um, which I would have bought if I didn't already have a copy, because it wasn't that beautiful. And then this funny thing, Tessa Bailey in the crime section. I know my killer vacation is crime, but not that much. And then Terms of Conditions, my fave. This was another book that I purchased in Waterstones, The Guest Cat. I love it. And here are the three that I actually chose, all from my wish list, which I have probably deleted, don't worry. Then we headed around to Blackwell's. This is actually the poster shop or the poster and art shop it used to be. But unfortunately, they've got rid of most of the art books and it is now mostly a fantasy shop. So I didn't buy anything in here. I did see The Goblin Emperor, this book I'm showing you now. I was obsessed with it. It looked so beautiful. 
and then I read the blurb and realised it was a political fantasy and that's not my vibe so I put it back. Also we found it quite funny that the Waterstones exclusive of Midnight and Everwood was in Blackwells before we realised Waterstones now owns Blackwells. Um, then we went across the road to the other Blackwell store where they mostly house their fiction, crime fiction, and the bit that was my Achilles heel, translated fiction. And this is where I made my biggest purchase of the day and definitely blew my budget. <laughs> as you can see, I am picking up quite a few books here and there are some of my favourites on there, such as Kim Ji Young, Sir Kamarata. So it was a really great selection. And these are the four that I chose from that Blackwell's shop. <laughs> Then we went across to the library's shop, the Bodleian Library I think it was, and it had this amazing autumn display outside and then a winter display inside, which was really bizarre. Um, but it had some cute decorations and as Beth could say, you could have any old white man you want. <laughs> and then we stopped to admire the architecture in this area. So around the Bodleian Library, which I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's why I've heard people say, there's these really, really beautiful buildings and the architecture is just amazing in Oxford. I think if I had been bougie growing up, I might have gone into architecture because I am slightly obsessed with it. I just find this walk so beautiful. You walk around the corner and boom, there's the library and it is just amazing. It was quite difficult to get a good shot of it because the sun was in a really awkward position by the time we got there, but I think it still looks really beautiful in the shots that I managed to get. Um, I just kept moving to try and get the sun out of the way and it wasn't happening. <laughs> but I think it's a really beautiful area and I really love exploring here. And yeah, it just is a lovely walk. You can take some really lovely pictures if you hit the right time of day, but of course, there's always lots of tourists. Nearby was this Oxfam with the most beautiful view. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything that I wanted in there, but it was nice to visit anyway, and I love a good Oxfam bookshop. And then we went for my first visit to the Covered Market, which was very exciting. It had this most beautiful plant shop. And then we went around the corner to Gulp Fiction, and Beth had a quick look, but it was too hot for me. I didn't stay inside. And then we found this really cute stationery shop Beth had been telling me about. We didn't go in because I'd blown my budget, but it was cute. Now, if you've read Babel, you will recognise this lane. This is where Babel is set and where the main character lives. It is my current read, so I don't know much about it, but it was really cool to go and visit. And uh, yeah, Beth led me here. And that is the house from Babel. So if you're in Oxford, go and visit. <laughs> Then we decided to go and get some snacks and I got some taro milk tea. I always get extra ice, low sweetness, and it was delicious as you can see. And here is the final haul of the day for me. More books than I intended to buy, seven in total, but I think it was totally worth it. So then we see, saw my love, Miniso, one of my favourite shops, but I didn't buy anything, don't worry. And we decided to stop in in the other Blackwells in the shopping centre briefly. I didn't make a purchase here, but Beth did. Instead, I walked around looking for my favourites and look, more Lauren Asher on the table, love to see it. And I also saw the Winter Garden, which is one of my favourites and I highly recommend it for winter reads. And of course, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, one of the best books I've ever read. And it was really cute to see Neil Gaiman and Stephanie Garth next to each other on the shelves. I love both those authors so much and this YA section was very tempting. Then we stopped in Costa for a little drink and a chat because we've been distracted by books all day but sadly it was then time to say goodbye so we could both go home to get dinner and this is me heading back. I didn't feel much of my journey back because I was actually a little bit scared. Um, Oxford gets kind of rowdy in the evenings and this was Halloween weekend so there were lots of people in lots of fancy dress and for some reason it is a new trend to dress up in scary Halloween costumes which it wasn't what people used to do when I was younger and when I was alone at the bus stop and it was getting darker and darker and there were lots of people in scary costumes I was getting quite anxious um, but yeah by the time the bus arrived I was very grateful I was here <laughs> and I was very happy to be on the bus and once again, just appreciating the architecture in Oxford because obviously it's a slightly different route back, but luckily made it back to the car safe and sound. And I was really grateful to be able to find it because I'd parked in a different area and I was very confused. Once again, please don't worry about the warning. I have booked my car in, it's all good we're safe. On my journey home, I listened to Dear Hank and John, which I also listened to on the way there, and I highly recommend it. It is a great podcast. I am a bit behind. And look, my face in the vlog once again. I arrived home to find Maggie staring at me from the landing window, as she often does, waiting for me to come in the house. But... <laughs> 
prepare yourself for the biggest part of chaos in this video in three two one puppies so this is our new dog letty we've had her for a couple of months now um she is a cockapoo we think but she's a rescue we didn't know what the dad was but they think she's a cockapoo and she is just adorable and bailey our resident dog <laughs> bailey loves to bring blankets as a gift so letty likes to try and copy what he does and steals the blankets from him quite regularly so you will see here they go back and forth between who's bringing which blanket to me as a gift and it is very very cute they've only actually been alone for about an hour here when i came home but you'd think they've been left alone all day with how excited they were to see me <laughs> And of course, Maggie, our overlord, was waiting for me by the banisters in the stairs. Didn't want to come down though because the dogs were a bit too excited, but I tried to fuss her and honestly she was not in the mood because the dogs were being very excited and she was not a fan of that. And when I tried to fuss her, she just gave me a whack. So I backed off and I knew she'd get cuddles from me later when I went upstairs. <laughs> she is moody, but we love her. She is my baby. So check in again in the mirror just to say I'm alive and look at that flop <laughs> of the bag as it drops on the bed. I was very happy with myself. I actually secretly went and bought this chocolate in the day in Oxford and I completely forgot to film Montezuma's, mostly because it's a tiny shop and I felt a bit uncomfortable. This is a very bougie chocolate brand basically, but I absolutely love it. These chocolate buttons are some of the best chocolate I've ever had, but they are £30, so I don't get them very often. Here is the final book haul, all seven of the books that I bought. Let's go through them one by one. The first book is The Night and Its Moon by Piper CJ, which you may recognise from TikTok. This is a fantasy about two orphans who are separated and one is sent to work in a brothel who are determined to reunite, and it is LGBT. I have been wanting to try this for a while and I'm hoping I like it more than most reviewers because it's kind of not got the best reviews, but I am hoping it is better for me. So yeah, then we have The Guest Cat by Takashi Hiraidi, I think is how you say it. Now the author is a poet, but this is written as a regular novel and it's about a couple who don't have much to talk about anymore in their older age, but one day a cat basically adopts them and it brings new lease of life into their world. So it's literally contemporary fiction and it's apparently very, very beautiful and really moving and I'm very much looking forward to it. As you can see, I was fighting for my life trying to get the camera to focus on this blurb, but pause if you'd like to read it. It sounds beautiful and really moving and I can't wait to give it a go. And then we move on to There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kikuku Sumara. So this one is about a woman who is looking for an easy job and is struggling to find one and kind of about the journey she goes on, whether she's actually looking for an easy job or something else in life. If this was recommended to me by my friend Rosie and I am really excited about it, it's quite chunky, but it sounds interesting. Then we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, which if you haven't heard of it, I am very surprised. This is a Japanese literary fiction magical realism book about a cafe where the customers are able to go back into the past very briefly. It is kind of a collection of short stories that are interwoven being set in the same cafe and it sounds really beautiful. Then we have Lemon by Kwon Yeo Sun, which is a crime thriller that is not really about who did it. This is more about exploring the grief and the trauma of the people that survived. And it's about a young woman who was murdered and basically the fallout of what happens afterwards, but it follows people from the time and in the future to discover what happened to her. And of course we have to pause for some Maggie cuddles because I was on the bed and she demanded cuddles. You may have noticed that there is a theme here that I have a lot of Japanese and Korean literary fiction here and that's quite simply because I've been really enjoying it lately and that was what I decided to buy while I was in Oxford instead of creepy books because I knew I was going to read them and I was going to enjoy them and I might be doing a vlog reading them all in the future. Then I chose The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura which is a thriller slash literary fiction book. This is about the woman in the purple skirt who basically is being stalked and obsessed over by the woman in the yellow cardigan. It is about how she manipulates this other woman's life and eventually becomes incredibly jealous and envious of her as she has an affair with their boss. It sounds creepy and amazing. Then I chose The Disaster Tourist by Yun Ko Yun. This is another literary fiction thriller and it is about a woman who works for a tour company that goes to disaster zones. They 
she is preyed upon by her male colleague and to try to avoid any fallout they send her to investigate one of their least profitable locations and that is all the books i picked i then went and edited a video while the puppy played very excitedly in the background and i had a nice thai maspan curry and watched peaky blinders for this is my first watch so no spoilers please and i think it was quite a successful day so i'm wrapping up here with some more maggie cuddles when i went back upstairs if you like this video please give it a like consider subscribing to see more content from me all of my social media links are in the description below and if you'd like to leave me a comment to let me know you are here leave me a cat emoji in the comments below in honor of our overlord thank you again for watching bye